Hi everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Lori and I create videos here about my passion for writing, journaling, planning, fountain pens and fountain ink, and sometimes some other things too. Today we are doing a little recap video and looking at my entire collection and I'm choosing just my top pen from each of my pen brands. And I'm going to be focusing on pen brands that I have at least two pens so I can at least compare two. Some I have several, some I may just have two. I'm also going to be basing my decision on a couple of things but mostly just what I reach for the most. In some cases it came down to value, sometimes it came down to what was more sentimental to me but I will explain all those things to you as we move on. I think I have like 13 to 15 brands that I will be sharing my top pen from. So I think I'm going to get started with the brand that I have I think the most pens from or several pens from and that is Pilot. If you are a fountain pen enthusiast it is very likely that you have a Pilot pen in your collection. The thing I like most about Pilot is their range of options. My pens range with my least expensive pen being the Pilot Kakuno, was one of my very first fountain pens that I ordered. And I think my most expensive pen is probably the 823 from Pilot. There's also the Pilot Prera, which I really like. It's around that $30 price point. The Pilot Metropolitan, between $18 and $25. I don't use this as much. The classic E95S, but I have to give my number one pick to, and it might surprise some people, the Vanishing Point in matte black. As much as I absolutely love the Pilot 823, which was a gift from my husband, I have it in amber in a medium nib. It writes like a dream. I had to give it to the Vanishing Point because the Vanishing Point is a pen that I reach for every single day. In fact, this was in my backpack for a few days and I didn't have eyes on it and I was like getting anxiety because I couldn't find this pen. This is the pen that I write the most with in my daily journaling. I like to keep black ink in my Hobonichi. I've experimented with a, a lot of different styles and colors, but moving into 2024, I'm going to be using a black brown or a black ink in my Hobonichi. I just don't think anybody does it better than the Pilot Vanishing Point with the click quickness and the reliability of the nib. The one downside to this pen is the ink capacity and the converter is lousy. Like I wish I could just ink this pen up like with Twisby ink capacity and just forget about it because it is so consistent. I recently added the Pilot Matte Green with Gold Finish from the Taiwan 30th anniversary. I actually got a medium nib on both of these. They're both fantastic, um, but I have to give it to the black because this is the one that I reach for the most. And this was also half the price of this because this was a special edition. I also have a white Decimo, but I would put my Pilot Custom 823 way before the, the Decimo as far as how often I reach for it, enjoyability, but I do appreciate this. I did get this in a fine nib, so I don't reach for it quite as much, but it's growing on me but I gotta give my Pilot nod to the Pilot Vanishing Point in matte black. Couldn't live without this pen. Okay, next up is a brand that I also love. I purchased my very first gold nib through this brand. I think I have maybe six or seven of their pens and that is Sailor. Sailor has such an incredible amount of color variations that you can choose from, but their style is much more simplistic. Like when you compare it to like a Leonardo or some of the Italian brands that are known for their swirls of color or Banu, something like that. Sailor is very understated, but it has such an incredible following and their nibs are beautiful. My very first 14 karat gold nib was the Sailor Autumn Moon from the Shikiori series. I bought this on Amazon for about 80 or $90. I still have it in my collection and I enjoy it more and more every day. This has a 14 karat gold nib. I do prefer typically the 21 karat gold nibs um, like in the, with the Winter Rain pen is absolutely beautiful. Probably one of my favorite writers. This one was really difficult because it came down to two pens. Oh gosh, Sailor's actually really hard for me. This is just such a gorgeous writer. The problem I have with this pen is I don't reach for it all the time because I do like to post my um, 
Pro Gear Slims, and this post is not secure. This falls off really easily, and you can see the difference between the cap. Um, and so for whatever reason, I find this falls off, and I don't enjoy writing with it without being posted, so I don't reach for this as often, but this nib is just beautiful. Then it came down to these two pens. So this is a new pen that I just bought, when I thought I wouldn't buy any more Pro Gear Slims. This is the Line Friends with the little teddy bear face on the finial. And this definitely could be some, what do they call it, recency bias because I just picked this up. I love this coffee color that leans towards pink a little bit. Um, and then the section is different. This is a 14 karat gold medium fine nib. It's not quite the writing experience as with the Winter Rain or with my home pen from Yoseka. This is absolutely beautiful. The reason that I'm putting these two side by side is because this was about half the price of this one. So the Pro Gear is definitely the, a size that I absolutely favor and I love this color combination and this medium nib is just so beautiful. Really, really puts down a lot of ink. Um, but it was double the price of this. So these are very close. If I had to pick based on value, I would go with this pen. Sailor pens just run the gamut. It can really get crazy what you can pay for sailor pens. There are a lot of different points. I guess if I had to give it to overall writing experience, I'm sorry, I'm such a gray area person. These videos are very hard for me. I would give it to the home. Um, because I really love the Pro Gear model. I love the size of it. This nib is just sensational. And I think for me with Japanese nibs, I associate them sometimes with not a ton of ink on the paper. And that is true for my Realo, which I haven't really gotten into this. Um, I didn't love my first ink choice in here, but I'm getting ready to put Bah Humbug in here from the Inkvent Diamine. 2023 and I think Bah Humbug is going to be really pretty in this pen. This is a fine nib and it's almost too fine for me even though this is that larger size. This is the 1911 size that has the cigar shape um, and I do prefer the Pro Gear and Pro Gear Slim flat top finials. This is a really, really close second and one of the reasons I also didn't pick this is because it's just so new. Will I feel the same way about this pen in six months? I don't know, but the color is perfection for me. Since I started with Pilot and Sailor, we might as well continue on to another Japanese brand. I only have two, actually I have three pens from Platinum. Um, two of them were purchased in Japan and that was the Shape of Heart Century 3776 and also the Calico, which is celluloid uh, in the 3776 model. When I purchased these, I had no idea uh, the difference between celluloid and non-celluloid pens. I didn't understand why they cost more. This is in fact my favorite pen from Platinum, but I think it's more because of the nib and I just love the look of this. I love tortoise shell. I love any combination of creams and browns and black. So this pen just checks all the boxes and I happen to get this in a medium nib and this in a fine nib. You do get a lot of feedback with platinum pens as you do with sailor pens, which is something people either really love or maybe they're a little neutral with. I enjoy feedback. I think one of the reasons that the Pilot 823 was not on the very top of my list in the Pilot category is that it is so buttery. You would just glide across that paper, but sometimes I like the feedback. It keeps me a little bit more engaged, but for whatever reason, I don't love the feedback on the fine nib of this shape of heart. These pens are just gorgeous. So I have to give this one to the Calico with the medium 14 karat gold nib. It's just an absolute beautiful writer. I like to put Dusted Truffle in here from last year's Ink Van Calendar. For whatever reason, I keep going back to that ink for this pen. I also just recently bought some Pilot Preppies in all white, and those are fun too, but they're just not comparable. Now let's head over to Italy, and we are going to look at Leonardo pens. Leonardo it, it, they're just some of my very favorite pens in my collection. I would say like my Leonardo's and my Estabrook Estes are the colorful pens in my collection that just bring me a lot of joy. Sometimes they can feel a little busy depending on what kind of mood I'm in, but generally I just love to look at them. I've tried to get a variety of nibs and a variety of colors, 
But I have to say, and this is ironic because I'm saying how much I love their colorful pens, but I have to say that for my Leonardo pen, this has some sentimental value attached to it as well. But my husband got me the Leonardo Sand Memento Zero Grande, and he got it with a 14 karat gold nib. This is my only Leonardo pen with a gold nib, and it's just so beautiful. So for Valentine's Day, he picked out this Fiore Grande in Blue Hawaii, all on his own. I had no idea. He just went into Apple Boom. He works in Boston, and this is the pen he selected. So this is so meaningful to me. It has a steel nib. It is a fine nib. I love the ebonite feed on Leonardo's as well. I just like the medium nib a little bit better. I like the way that this writes. I just put Romeo and Juliet ink in here by Robert Oster, and I really am enjoying it. Let me just show you the nib on this. These are both piston fillers. Um, but just to share with you some of my other Leonardo's that I do love, I have the matte finish um, in the primary manipulation one. I got this at Gold Spot, and this has a stub nib. This is a really fun pen. And this has an ink window, which I love. The more I, the more I use pens, the more I like ink windows. But I love that the ink window is concealed when the pen is, um, is closed. I do really like the Leonardo Momento Zero size. Um, so I have these, this is a Muse pen, and this is a Drum Ghouls exclusive. So these are two exclusives. Um, and I do like the size of those, but I think I have to give it to the sand because it's the only 14 karat gold nib that I have. It's a beautiful writer. I love the medium nib. I love that it came from my husband and I just love, um, how neutral it is. It, it it's, has a flair without being over the top, and I love that. Um, and I remember when he got me the Blue Hawaii, I loved kind of the, the lines in these, the vertical lines, and I said, oh, this is so beautiful. I said, the only thing that would be better than this is the same pen in, in sand uh, with a medium nib, and then he got this for my anniversary, I think? I don't know, Jay, Jay's a sweetheart but I, I'm known for dropping some pretty strong hints. Uh, the only other brand from Italy, I have one um, Monte Grappa Elmo that I absolutely love in a medium nib, but I don't have anything to compare that to. So that's the winner by default. I have two Visconti pens. One is a Homo sapien, and then the other one is a Venus, which I'd never heard of before. This was one of the first pens I've bought. There's been a lot of conversation around this particular pen. I hated this pen when I first got it. I ordered it on one of those websites that's like for fancy gifts and they, they also carry pens. I ordered it in a fine nib. It never worked properly. I dropped it. It was cracked. The bottom fell off. This was like so close to just being tossed and it was, you know, it was a pricey pen. And then Kirk Spear got his hands on it and now I love it. You can barely see the little crack. I found the bottom. I put Humpty Bunt Dumpty back together again and this is a beautiful writer. This is called the Venus. I don't hear many people talk about this pen. It's got a metal section and it writes great. However, does not compare to my Homo sapien. This is the white lava Homo sapien. I got the uh, crab for uh, my zodiac sign, which also matches my dad's. I got this when my dad was sick with lung cancer and I looked up what color was the ribbon for lung cancer. I was just like thinking like, could I get a pen to honor my dad? Plus it was Italian, my dad's Italian. There were, there were a lot of reasons why I chose this. And I believe I got this from Cult Pens in January of this year. Anyways, this will always be one of my very favorite pens. I do think I could stand to have some nib work done on this. For some reason, when I go on a diagonal, sometimes it skips but it's a beautiful pen. I wouldn't consider this like an everyday writer. I love it for so many reasons, and this will probably, on sentimental value, always be my number one Visconti, but I don't have much to compare it to. I would like to get a Van Gogh, and the Mythos is actually the series that I think is really beautiful. I love the brown pen and the Aphrodite pen. That could be my next Visconti purchase. Uh, next up, we can talk about Kavecos and Twisbees, because those are fun entry-level pens that I keep coming back to. I know I have some 
higher end pens in my collection for sure, but there's just something to be said for the portability, reliability of a little pocket pen that you can revisit over and over. And I have to give this one to the Bordeaux and it has to be inked up with Oxblood. I just love this combination so much. I love this rich Bordeaux color with the gold um, finish, the gold trim, and I got, of course, this um, clip to go with it. I love this so much. I have the Brass Cavego. I have the Terrasso, which is a newer one. I have a Cult Pen Exclusive, which is really pretty. I love my Cavegos. If I had to pick a number two, it might go to the Macchiato because this was the first Cavego that I bought. And then I gave it to my daughter and it never came back from Spain. So then I repurchased it. I really love this because it's like that coffee color, but I got to give it to the Bordeaux with a medium nib. It's so classy. It feels rich, even though it's like a $20 pen. I can't say enough about the Bordeaux. I love it. And then as far as Twisbees go, this may not come as a surprise to many of you, and I hope it's here in my collection here. But, oh, where are you? I don't even have it with me because I put a bunch of my mini pens in my Galen leather pouch, but the Twisby Mini, oh my gosh, far and away, the Twisby Mini. I like it over all of them. I recently just got the cream with the rose gold trim, and this would probably be a close second with a medium nib, but I just love that mini. It's so cute. Again, that's a newer pen, so maybe that's one of the reasons I love it so much. I have the Diamond 580 in clear. That's pretty, but I have it in a stub nib, so I don't use that every day. And I also have the Smoke with rose gold trim in a medium, but they're all Ecos. They all kind of write the same as this, but there's something very special about that Twisby Mini that I wouldn't want to live without. So that has definitely earned its place in my collection and at the top of my favorites as far as Twisbys go. I have four Mont Blancs. One I'm selling. I have the Greta Garbo Muse series, and I absolutely loved that pen so much, but similar to the Sailor issue, I couldn't post it. It, would, it was very back heavy and I absolutely loved the top of that pen. It's cream with a little pearl on the clip and a beautiful flat finial with the Mont Blanc star. It is gorgeous. And I couldn't post it because it, would, it kept falling off. And for the price of that pen, I was so afraid something was gonna happen if it fell off at the wrong angle. I thought I was gonna have that pen forever because on a beauty scale, it's right up my alley. It's feminine, it's beautiful, it's black and cream, wrote beautifully but I'm selling that. I don't even have that. I have it like inventoried because I'm a reseller um, for my other job. So it's with my stuff for eBay and Poshmark. Then I got the Mont Blanc Noblesse, which is a great writer. I got this secondhand. I think I paid $90 for it, um, but it's a little slimmer than what I prefer. The 149 and the Bebe, which is also a newer pen to me, are the two that I reach for the most. Um, but I would have to give it to the 149. This is classic, it's vintage, it has an ebonite feed. I bought it at the Orlando Pen Show. It was a great purchasing experience and I reach for this pen all the time. The only thing I would change about this pen is I would like to see what it would be like, this exact pen with a fine nib or a medium nib. For an extra fine, for my taste, it puts down a lot of ink, but I can see myself getting another 149 or having a custom grip, uh, grind on this, but I love this so much, I kind of don't want to mess with it. I was thinking maybe somewhere down the road if I can pick up a more modern 149 with a more broad nib, like a medium, that might be fun. And then I'll have like a vintage one in an extra fine and a more contemporary one in a medium nib but I have to give it to the 149. I talk about this pen all the time. I don't wanna like bore you with how much I love that pen, but it is fantastic. Esterbrook Estes are among some of my absolute favorite pens. They're beautiful. They come in so many colors. I have a huge love for the Esty. These are all of my Estes. I also have the Candy Oversized. I also have the Raven. These are all such gorgeous pens, but I have to give my winner to Rocky Top. I just love this pen so much and they don't make this pen anymore. I got this at a shop in Cambridge, Mass. 
that they just happened to have overstock. They found some in their back room after they thought they were sold out of them. I love the diamond cast in here from Mackenzie. Um, I just think this is such a beautiful pen. I love to look at it. I love the swirls. It's a medium nib, which writes so beautifully. I just love this rocky top and I think it's the diamond cast in here which makes it so pretty. It's a great fall pen. I would probably follow up with the Esterbrook uh, Blue Nouveau or Nouveau Blue. I got this when I was in Orlando and I got it with a journaler's nib which I absolutely love. I love the brown um, next to the blue with the gold trim. I love Esterbrook. There's so much I love about that brand but when I think of the one that I think is the one I reach for the most and the nib that I enjoy the most I think I have to give it to Rocky Top. I have two Pelicans. One was given to me. It is the the 200 in the golden barrel. So beautiful. Then I went out and I finally got my M800 with a fine nib in this just writes like a dream. I'm kind of new to Pelicans. Um, I would definitely prefer this just because it's just such a stunning pen. Oh gosh, this looks like a mark. Oh, interesting. It's got this like discoloration on the ring. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just noticing it now for the first time. This was a new pen. I don't think it's ink. Have you ever experienced that? Do you see the I don't know if you can see that. Anyways, I'm just noticing that for the very first time. That's upsetting. Anyways, this is a, uh, a fine nib. I would like to try this in an extra fine. Funny, like depending on the brand, I go in one direction or the other. I'm sure this won't be my last Pelican. I would love to try the red and white with the gold trim, trim M600. I have my eye on that. I feel like I like the weight of the M800, but I love the how feminine the white pens are. And I wasn't as into the green with the silver trim, but I really love the red with the gold. I think it's beautiful. So that's on my radar. And then just really quickly, Jin Hao. I figured I would mention Jin Hao because I have a couple of Jin Hao 82s, like three or four. I've given some away. And then I have the Jin Hao X159. I really enjoy this pen. This was the pen that made me more interested in the Mont Blanc 149. I bought this pen. I really enjoyed the experience. It has a huge nib on it. It's a beautiful writer for what you pay. Um, if you're just getting into pens and you don't want to spend a lot of money, Jin Hao is definitely going to be a brand that comes up. I love the color variety that you can get. This is like a sailor knockoff. This is a Mont Blanc 149 knockoff. I definitely reached for this a lot more than the 82 prior to getting the 149. Now I don't really reach for this very often. I've given a couple of these away, but it is not a bad writer for what you pay. So I would prefer the X159 over the 82. I have more. Lamy. I have the Lamy 2000. I prefer my Vanishing Point over it 10 times out of 10. I will keep it in my collection. I keep going back to it. I just still, I've had it for like six months, maybe even longer than that. I just haven't warmed up to it. I know it's a phenomenal pen. It just doesn't speak to me like the Vanishing Point does. My favorite Lamy is this Itoya exclusive that I got in Japan. I prefer my Lamy Safaris to have that black coating. For whatever reason, I've had better luck with these pens than I have just the stainless ones. So I have this one and then the Terracotta. They both have the black um, coating on the nibs and I just love that I bought this one in Japan. It was an Etoya exclusive. I love the, um, the trim on this. It's so pretty. It's a medium nib. I just really love this pen. I prefer it. I have a sepia dark dark brown ink in here and I've just been loving it. This is a great everyday carry. My Lamy of choice. I also like the Lamy Joy too, but you guys know how that ended. Lumpy ate my Lamy Joy, and then I put the nib, which is a 1.5 stub, in um, a Safari, and then he ate that one too. So, oh, here's my mini. Here's my mini. So pretty. I love my mini. Okay, last thing that I want to talk about are my Banu's. I have acquired quite a few Banu's, most of them secondhand. I have four Banu's. Three of them are secondhand. So this was the first Banu I bought. It was one of my first pens 
that I fell in love with. This is, of course, the Iced Caramel Latte from Goulet Pens. This is a, an exclusive. I got it in the first round. I felt so lucky because they sold out so quickly. I was so quick to get this pen. I absolutely love it. I got it in a fine nib. I wish I had it in a medium nib. I love that this is blingy without being really over the top, and I love all things related to these neutral colors. So I love that. So these are the three that I bought secondhand. Um, some I got in bundles of pens that I bought on the secondhand market, and people have asked me. I, I look everywhere. I look on eBay. I look on Mercari. I look on Grailed Pens, The Real Real. I'm all over the place. But I got Vodka on the Rocks, which is a broad nib, and it writes so great. This is the Riolette. I don't even know what this one's called. This is such a great little writer. But I have to say that my favorite of all of them is Bourbon. Look at the colors in this. It is just so gorgeous. This was like the ultimate pen in October. I had a J. Urban color in here that was just beautiful. And this is the nib. I think this is maybe a medium nib. I'm seeing a theme here, uh, but this nib is gorgeous. And this is the Euphoria line. I do not have a talisman. Um, that is probably going to be my next Banu. And eventually I may sell some of these, although I like them all for different reasons. I'm inking this up for the month of December. It's December 20th. I should probably ink it up, but I want to put like a red in here. I just think that would be fun for the holidays. And the ice caramel latte is just so great. I still wish they had done gold hardware on this. I really do, but I still love this pen and this is just so cute and I got a great deal on this. Those are all of the pens that I have at least two of and I shared with you my favorite and why. Let me know some of your favorites in the different categories or brands that I shared. Let me know if I shocked you with any of my choices. I have a bunch of singles, like I have a single Navalar, I have a single Scribo, um, a Le Bon. I have a lot of pens that I just have one, but nothing to compare it to, so they win by default. That's all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back soon with more pen content. If you enjoyed today's video, please like and subscribe. Merry Christmas to everybody who celebrates. I hope you're enjoying the holiday season, and I'll be back real soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.